So hello everyone and welcome to Electronic Technocrat, the techie guy, your own techie guy. So, today we'll be talking about, now I will make you people guess about this. We use them in our daily life and they make our life much more easier. Actually, basically I'm trying to give you a riddle. Solve this riddle. Any guesses? I'll give you five seconds. Alright, just guess. Tick tick one, tick tick two, three, four, five. Your time's up. Now let's see the answer. So, any guesses for the answer? The answer is. Ta da! Correct! Sensors. You absolutely guessed it right. We all live in a world of sensors today. You will find different types of sensors in our workplace, at our homes, at our, in our cars and so many different places. These sensors are making our lives much more easier. Like for example, by turning on the lights, by detecting our presence, adjusting the room temperature, detecting the smoke or the fires and making us delicious cup of coffee. Or opening a garage as soon as a car is near the doors and so many different tasks. Isn't sense such a special thing? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Harvey Mandel. I know that. Senses are really, really important for every one of us. Now the first question that arises about what is a sensor? Now I've told you about the use of sensor, but you must be thinking he told us about sensors, but what are the sensors basically? There are so many dictionary meanings about sensors that we also got confused about what to tell in the video. You know, I was so confused. But in my opinion, when I will define how I will define sensor or when I will talk about sensor, I will talk sensor as or define sensor as as an input device which will provide me an output with respect to the specific physical quantity. That physical quantity is your input. Alright, I'll repeat the sentence. I will define sensor as an input device which will provide me an output with respect to a specific physical quantity. And that physical quantity is the input. Perfect. Now when I talk about the input device here, the input device in this sensor definition it literally means it is a part of a bigger system which will provide you the input to a main control system like what we can say is 8051 microcontroller or 8086 processor so we have got so many professor processors sorry <laughs> my bad not the professors the processors means that it is a part of a bigger system these input devices are the part of a bigger system called as sensors and these provides the input to the main control system that are the microprocessors or the microcontrollers like I've given the example to you like microcontrollers like 805 and microprocessors like 8086, 8087 so on. Another very unique and different taste of definition we have is it is a device that converts signals from one energy domain to electrical energy domain. Did you get it? Like from one energy domain to the other electrical domain. Now, if you take an example, now let me take an example for you. Uh, I guess this would be this confusion, right? <laughs> Limit 1 plus 1 upon n raised to the power n is equal to e key power. What? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Sensors? This must be the situation right now, ain't it? Don't worry, I will clear this out. Let's take a real life example for you to understand much better. So, the real life example that we are talking about or which we will be talking about will be this example. Not the boxes, I will fill these boxes. The first one is the sensors, the second one is the computer, and the third one is the output. Now, the sensors part has got different types of sensors that we will be discussing in the future videos. That is the position sensor, the height sensor, the speed sensor, the temperature sensor, the location, the humidity sensor and so on. 
the center part is a computer part that is a microcontroller or a microprocessor and the last part is the output part the output part would be in our case we are taking an example of any cases that's correct an aeroplane or we can say an airplane we are taking an example of an airplane as a real life example to understand sensors more deeply so in an airplane we've got position sensors height sensors speed sensors temperature sensors location sensors and so many others and we have got a computer in as well and in the output we have got engine we got flaps motors wings and so on the example we are talking about or the real life example we are talking about is the autopilot system in aircrafts that's correct that is the airplane related the autopilot system almost each and every civilry and military aircrafts have this feature that is the autopilot mode you must have heard it the autopilot mode now how does this work the autopilot flight control system consists of several sensors for different tasks like for calculating the position the acceleration the doors the obstacle the fuel maneuvering and so many others the computer here you can see here the computer here takes all the data from all these sensors the data goes to the computer and the computer processes them by comparing them with the threshold values now for here the threshold values are the values that are predetermined or are already calibrated all right so they start the computer starts comparing the values of these sensors with this threshold or we can say the predesigned values of the computer and then the computer then provides a control signal yes that's correct the computer then provides a control signal to different parts like the engines the flaps the rudders etc that are there in an aeroplane or an airplane to be more precise that will help it in a smooth flight so to summarize this what we will see is we are studying about autopilot example all right that are used in airplanes these airplanes have sensors computers and outputs the sensors here calculate the position the height the dose the obstacle the fuel maneuvering and so many things this information is being taken and been given to the computers the what the computer's task is the computer will process all these signals and compare them with the predesigned or the threshold values and after that the computer then provides a control signal that means the output of the computer would be a control signal and this control signal will control the different parts of the airplane that is the engines the flaps the rudders and so on so this is how the mechanics run and makes it possible to run a plane in an autopilot mode so to a better understanding why not we will get to another example that's correct let's get to another example now the next example will be very simple example this is again it's a very simple example we will take now it is the LDR example that's correct what is the full form of LDR any guesses it's light uh, I'm not getting it. it's light uh, don't worry it's light dependent resistor there we go it's light dependent resistor also abbreviated as LDR this is a very simple example do you know what the LDR works on it can be in two modes in the dark mode or in the light mode basically the simplest example we can take is an LDR or we can say the light dependent resistor it is a device basically as you can see it is a device that's correct whose resistance varies according to the intensity of the light it is subjected to the amount of light that is falling on this LDR's surface will change the resistance or we can say vary the resistance when the light falling on the LDR is much more than expected the resistance becomes very less absolutely it's inversely proportional more the light falls on the LDR surface more uh, less will be the sorry less will be the resistance and vice versa all right 
So we can connect this LDR in a voltage divider circuit. This is a very different part, so I won't go into detail about it. But you got the, uh, what we can say, working of this LDR. It's a very simple example that is used as a sensor. A very simple example of a sensor. It is a device whose resistance varies with the intensity of light that is subjected to it. What relation did I tell you between the light and the sub and the resistance of the resist of the LDR? Sorry, that's correct. Inversely proportional. More is the light, less is the resistance. Less is the light, more is the resistance of the LDR. As simple as that. So, let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next slide would be criteria to choose the sensors. Now we talk about criteria to choose the sensors. Whenever we go to a market, what is the first thing we do? <laughs> I'm not talking about the cost. The first thing that we do is we check. Okay, we check how precise or how accurate the device that we are buying is. If the device is not at all accurate, we won't buy it. Obviously, the cost doesn't matter. The cost is a secondary thing. The first thing you see is how it works. and this applies to the sensors as well when we go to a shop and you want to buy some clothes now you want look at the what we can say a tag price or we can say a price tag first of all you see what material it's made up of is it gonna last like for 3 to 4 years or more than that is it made of cotton or is it made of from other material will it suit my skin or not these are the factors that you actually or what is the color that is another important factor these are the factors you you what we can say you apply when you choose sensors oh sorry my bad when you choose clothes i'm totally into sensors now <laughs> i can't take the topic away sorry so that's the that's the uh, criteria that you uh, what we can say uh, <coughs> manifest when you choose a t-shirt or we can say any clothes same applies with the criteria to choose the sensors when you talk about sensors the very first the very first criteria that comes in our mind is absolutely accuracy and precision now these two terms do not mean the same thing you must be thinking what is the difference between accuracy and precision they both look to me as same i think they both are the uh what we can say two sides of the same coin but no that's wrong these two terms do not mean the same thing though they are often related with each other whenever you will see precision word you will find accuracy when you will find accuracy word you will find precision so both go hand in hand but they are both different accuracy has to do with how close the sensor reading is to the true value and the precision or refers to the ability of the sensor to detect small changes very tough no accuracy tells you about how close any sensor is to the true value like if the value of the sensor of a particular sensor is calibrated like for ultrasonic sensor the value is calibrated for 20 cm about 20 cm it won't calculate the distance then this accuracy deals with how close the sensor reading is to the true value that's correct and the precision refers to the ability of the sensors to detect the small changes all right if i'm taking an ultrasonic sensor and if i'm moving my hand backward and forward these small changes should be also recorded by the ultrasonic sensors all right this is precision for example a temperature sensor that measures the boiling water at 97.53 degrees celsius has a high precision but has a very very low accuracy both accuracy and precision of the instrumentation system must be accurate for the requirements of the systems that's correct too much of the precision can give you false impression the reading is also accurate or can result in the system detecting noise rather than actual desired data so as you always know too much of anything is bad that's the motto of this all right 
Yes, it's preciso. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Pretty accurate. Thank you, Jimmy Fallon. Now, let's go on to the second criteria. I hope you have understood the second criteria. First set criteria, sorry. The second criteria will be environment. Now, environment, whatever the thing that is coming into your mind is absolutely correct. Environmental challenges. The selection of the proper sensor requires a good understanding of the environment in which the sensor will be operated. We should know in which environment the sensor which we are operating in which environment is suited for the sensor itself. Many sensors can be affected by some non-idle conditions such as temperature variations, some kind of pressure variations, some kind of vibrations, some kind of humidity, some kind of chemicals exposed to it, etc. These sensors can be largely affected by these factors. It is also important to take care or to take the environment into account when we are selecting the sensor and how its packaging is done, how the mounting is done and how the uh, what we can say other calibrations are done and other options are being done. These things are also taken into considerations. So thinking about the sensor and what we can say buying or we can say using the sensor according to the environment is a very important factor that's correct now you can see here a small picture has been shown all the sensors like the acceleration the gyroscope the magnitude or the pressure have animals it is gain offset noise nonlinearity skew rotation and exhibited by the environment as I've told you temperature voltage vibrations aging operating modes so these are all those environmental effects that actually affects the sensors so we have to choose the sensor wisely according to the environment as well all right so we move on to the third one the third one will be conversions that's correct conversions in all the systems right now it is often preferred that the instrumentation system provides digital data that's correct we don't want analog data in the output a sensor in a basic concept gives you an output that is digital in nature we don't want the analog outputs so conversion is very important in instrumentation systems or we can say sensors the analog to digital converters that is known as the ADCs must be matched appropriately calibrated properly evaluated properly so that no errors are introduced or no money is wasted by overpaying for precision in one that is not present in the other so it is very simple whichever ADC device we are using or whichever ADC device or the block we are using the ADC device must be not completely but some amount of noise free must be error free must also be like okay we haven't wasted money on this so it should be like okay so my money is worth it should be like this so these kind of ADCs actually help for better conversions of the analog signals into digital signals all right yeah easy peasy my jeezy that's correct that's so easy ain't it so let's go to the fourth one the fourth one is called as signal conditioning now this has nothing to do with the air conditioning <laughs> not the AC is the SC that is signal conditioning you talk about signal conditioning but unfortunately the world is full of non ideal realities electrical noise is always present often more than what we expect and cause the readings to get more and more errors absolutely we are absolutely like don't even know even if you don't want noise is yet introduced in the device that's correct signal conditioners and other protection circuits can provide some protection from these noise effects before the conversion takes place signal conditioning provides you a bit of protection about 
the, from the electrical noise sometimes these signal conditioners are also useful but other times it is possible or prefer that to the process signals after conversion so the use of conditioners must be evaluated during the instrumentation design process so basically we have two functions of signal conditioning signal conditioning basically conditions the signal the word itself tells you the meaning it conditions the conditions the signal or we can say conditioning the signal it amplifies the signal and it makes the signal noise free so that we don't get any interruptions or any noise all right it is that simple exactly sir this is very important stuff because without signal conditioning it is very tough to get a error free signal that's correct yeah it's very important let's go on to the fifth one the fifth one is excitation well when you talk about excitation it's not about yay it's not about excitation but excitation here means many transistors require power to produce an output signal now you must have heard a word from my mouth that is transducers I will tell you what the transducers are and how are they different from sensors in the later part of the video we talk about transis transducers many transducers require power to produce an output signal and it's very important to provide a power source that will not produce any additional errors transducers require external power sources many of them require external power sources so when we apply the external power sources it is very important that we do not introduce any errors or it will cause many different noise errors inside the signal conditioning box and the signal conditioning box will get a lot of load to amplify the signals so when you're applying the power source just make sure the power source is absolutely noise free all right yes that's correct yes Phoebe and Rachel that's correct that's not excitation but this is how you will feel when you will understand what the con when you have understood about the concept of excitation that's correct so now moving on to the one of the last part of the PPT or the video what is the difference between a transducer and a sensor this is a very important part what is the difference between transducer and the sensor let's take a table all right one side will put a sensor one side will put a transducer what we will do is we will take one by one and we will explain each of them all right the, the very first point would be the sensor senses the physical changes occurring in the surrounding and converting it into a readable quantity that's absolutely correct a sensor senses the physical changes that are occurring in the surrounding whatever changes are occurring in the surrounding the sensor will sense all the changes and it will convert those uh, physical changes into a readable quantity that is absolutely that is the digital quantity and that what does a transducer mean a transducer is a device which when actuates transforms the energy from one form to another so its main motto about the transducer is it is a device that will convert one form of energy to another form and what is sensor it is a device that will sense the surroundings the physical change in the surroundings like the temperature drop the pressure drop the humidity drop or any kind of drops it will sense those convert those into something that is a readable quantity that is the digital signal and it will show us a reading format or in the graph format or any format we want as simple as that okay let's move on to the second point second point is in the sensor part the sensor detects the changes and induces the corresponding electrical signals that's very easy it will detect the changes and it will induce the electrical signals according to the changes all right transducer the conversion of one form of energy into another now this is very same to the first point the main function of transistor is converting one form of energy into another form of energy sensor it is converting this physical changes from the surroundings into something that is that can be read by humans okay the third point is examples examples like proximity sensor the magnetic sensor the accelerometer sensor the light sensor blah 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 so many sensors 
and what about transducers? Thermistors, potentiometers, thermocouples, etc. are the examples of transducers. So, I hope you got what is the difference between transducer and a sensor. Okay, so we will like to end our video here. In the next video, we will be talking about or we will be learning more about sensors. But hold on, I will not be telling you what I will be doing in the next video. For that, stay tuned, take care, stay safe, and thanks a lot. Till then, take care and goodbye. Hey you! Yes you! If you like our video, just hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to stay notified for the future updates.